damn. Look at all these assignments. What did I get myself into? <sighs> it's gonna be a long journey, but uh, I'm gonna do it. So as you guys know, I'm attending the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I'm planning on doing the full-time accelerated track, meaning my program is gonna last a year and a half. So starting now, fall 2020, if everything goes as according to plan, I'm doing fall, spring, summer. My last semester is in fall of next year, and I'll be an FNP fall of 2021. It is almost too good to be true, but it's also a little bit rushed. It's gonna be fast paced. It's gonna be very difficult. I told myself, I'm just gonna really grind this out. I'm gonna work really hard, and I'm gonna put extra time into it, because I know that if I put my heart and mind into anything that I can do, I'm gonna accomplish it. So I'm just gonna do my best, and hope you guys can also pray for me, send me your positive vibes, and that I'm able to accomplish this feat. Because, to be honest, it's not going to be easy. So I'm just going to do a little breakdown of my nursing schedule. So it looks like my very first semester, I'm taking four classes and a total of 11 credits. So I'm taking diagnostic reasoning and clinical decision making, advanced health assessment, advanced patho, and nursing theory and research. The second semester, I'm taking a total of three classes for 12 credits. And I'm taking informatics and quality improvement advanced pharmacology and genetics, and F&P adult and women's health. Third semester, I'm taking three classes for a total of 11 credits. That's health and public policy for advanced practice of nursing, family theory and health promotion, F&P children, and OB. Last but not least, my final semester, I'm taking three classes, total of 12 credits, and it's gonna be nurse practitioner business and roles, F&P geriatric and chronic illness, and clinical synthesis for a total of ding 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 46 credits so 46 credits four semesters total is going to get me my fnp degree i can't believe it guys a big difference between a master's program and a bsn program is that whereas in the bsn program all your clinicals are planned out they're laid out for you you are placed guaranteed every semester at a hospital you know where you're going you know how many hours you have to complete in an msn program the responsibility of finding clinical rotations and also looking for preceptors falls onto the responsibility of the student which is me so instead of the school figuring out you know who i'm going to preceptor who i'm going to be following where i'm going to be going for all these clinical hours i have to make an effort to set that up for myself. Now granted, if I'm having difficulty arranging to find my own preceptor, that's when the school would step in and help me out, maybe lean me towards the direction of possible preceptor prospects and ideas. But the responsibility should really be the student because if you think about it, by now as you know, you're, you're already an registered nurse, you're a professional, you should be able to learn how to network, you should be able to learn how to reach out to different people because this is real life here. You know, everything's not gonna be set up for you, everything is not gonna be, you know, arranged and all that. I have to take the matters into my own hands, I gotta be able to find out and also arrange for my own preceptor so then that way I know who exactly I want to shadow I can pick you know who I want to work with and then that way I can get the best clinical experience possible good morning y'all it is September 7th aka Labor Day and today is also a special day because it is the very first day I get to start FNP school so it is an exciting day and this is the official start to my FNP journey quick fun fact if you don't know while you're in training, you're in an internship, you're in residency for the new grad or you're still an established nurse, whatever it is, if you're still going through the classes, you can never work a holiday. Because the hospitals, they're putting a lot of money into training you at this point. Why give you extra money to work a holiday, which is time and a half. Before I begin any of my schoolwork today, I'm just gonna start off with getting a quick workout and I wanna show you guys my project that I've been working on the last couple of weeks. So let's get right to it. So guys, this is my home gym setup. As you can see with any gym, it starts off with the weights. This is the most integral part of your workout. I was able to be lucky enough, I went on an offer up and I got these two adjustable dumbbells from Bowflex, which ranges from weight from five pounds all the way up to 52 and a half on each dumbbell. You can set up the settings, it's adjustable, and this is a great way to save space in your home gym. The other weights that I got, I got a couple kettlebells and I got some smaller weights. I had those already, so I didn't have to spend money on those. Good thing about those dumbbells is that it it came with this nice bench also from Bowflex too. So in total for the bench and for the dumbbells I spent $550 and then in addition to that I went to the store the same day I also got some gym padding 
very good padding and I also got something for underneath some turf was it worth it completely yes because I get to work out at home if I don't have time to go to the gym and you know with COVID-19 season it is so unpredictable you never know when the gym will decide to close let me just take you around I also got a basketball hoop guys you know if you want to shoot hoops for cardio we got that but I already had that in place and then I got these cool battle ropes from my friend Ravi who just gave it to me so for cardio we got the battle ropes we got basketball this is the section the table where I put my iPad you know to do P90X to do insanity for any high intensity interval training workouts and then I got my home gym set up so I'm pretty much set up guys I'm gonna show you guys a workout that I'm gonna do and then we're gonna start studying today Alright guys, well, I'm awake now, so let's get this day started. I'm going to start working on my first batch of assignments, and we're going to be super productive today, because what's Labor Day when you're not actually working? Let's do it. One, two, three. Let's go. Woo! That's refreshing. Bam! I'm ready to go. So, before I start off with studying, it's important that you first start off your day with the most important meal of the day, which is your breakfast. So, for today's post-workout meal, I made myself a grilled cheese sandwich, got some hot coffee, got a scoop of whey protein, and of course, what's any healthy meal without avocado? Because nowadays, when you look on Instagram, when you look on social media, people seem to have this perception that if you add avocado, it makes a lot more nutritious and delicious. So the heck, I decided to follow the norms of society and uh, add some avocado. So it looks like my meal has some greens in. I got some extra protein on the side with my protein shake and I am ready to go. And I'm going to get this meal down and I'm going to have a great day. Wow. This is really good, guys. You got to add the, uh, the avocado. I feel healthier already. <laughs> so before I get into any of the actual schoolwork, I just wanted to spend some time and give a shout out to all my day one followers out there. You know, you guys are the reason that my channel has been growing and it's because of people like you guys that I make this content, that I have inspiration to make content to help educate, especially you new grad nurses, you nursing students out there. So thank you so much to my day ones and to all my new followers especially. And also a special shout out to my haters because you know, without haters, you know, we don't have enough criticisms out there and you need criticisms to get better, to become a better person and to get stronger. So shout out to both my supporters and shout out to also my haters. And I have a message to you guys and it's from a grateful philosopher and the message goes as this may your neighbors respect you trouble neglect you angels protect you and heaven accepts you you guys oftentimes I don't really respond to the haters that much but I got a response to one of my videos the other day and I just had to share it because I thought this was pretty funny so I'm just gonna read it out to you guys I'm just gonna block out the name it says number one you need to be a good liar for when you or the other medical mafia members make mistakes Lies are a good way to cover up your mistakes. Number two, you have to be good at fake crying for when your patient's outcome is bleak due to your mistakes. Three, to be a great doctor, you must always lie for your fellow medical colleagues and after they will return the favor when you make mistakes. If you don't lie for them, they most likely will get together and blacklist you. Four, Google doctors cover up mistakes. Five, 
if about 178 million search results doesn't convince you that the medical profession is corrupt, then you should be a doctor. Number six, this was my funniest one. Uh, I would never be a good doctor because when my ex-girlfriend, ex-ex-girlfriend, emphasis on that, the surgical nurse told me that she and the other med staff lie for doctors often because if they didn't cover up and lie, then the doctors would get sued and put out of business. Then the doctors would no longer be able to help people. I dumped her after the shock of what she told me wore off. Number seven, there is one good thing about doctors that evens the score, that is. Doctors won't be needed in heaven anyways. The heck? Eight, it's sad when a person is refused medical treatment because a doctor or hospital made a mistake. That's a mean, cruel way to cover up medical mistakes. And last but not least, number nine, to me, doctors and healthcare workers are the lowest form of life. To me, doctors and healthcare workers are the lowest form of life. Whoa, 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 whoa. Take, take a step back right there. I don't know who hurt you. I don't know who affected you. And I'm all about free speech. You know, everyone is to their opinions, especially those that are anti-vaccines, those that are anti-maskers. No hate towards you guys. But to make comments like this, to shots fired to all these medical professionals that are on the front lines taking care of you guys, taking care of your family members, sacrificing us ourselves and putting our bodies on the line to fight COVID. Please show us some gratitude and respect because I don't know, comments like this, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm not gonna lie guys, so <sighs> whatever. All right, so let's go over the books guys. For Patho, I got this book by Benesik. I got Jarvis. You have to get the laboratory manual for the lab itself, and you have to actually have the actual textbook. A nursing theorist book. What's nursing without getting to know your nursing theorist? Practice of nursing research for my research class. Advanced assessment. A practical guide to clinical laboratory medicine and diagnostic imaging. So, you guys, it's going to be a long semester, and uh, look at these books, man. This is heavy as heck. But uh, I expect to read every single chapter just kidding so guys this is the official setup i got my computer right there hooked up to my tv using the cord i'm gonna be using this big screen more so you know to be looking at research articles just have something to reference to but for now of course you know you can't study without your music in the background playing and then i'm gonna show you guys my computer this is something i've been working on since uh, last night uh, when I was first recording this video, I separated my folder by uh, my textbooks, the semester, any important paperwork, and also my preceptor for ship forms. I'm also going to have a copy of the syllabus because the syllabus is your source and your direct source for any information, when are due dates, what are the big assignments, which assignments are weighed more heavily than others. So that's something to keep in mind. My school, we use Web Campus. I'm sure your campus uses this too. We use Web Campus for all of our education materials. I got all my subjects neatly organized from top to bottom right there. And the best way to tackle on these assignments from what I learned when I was in nursing school a couple years ago was to look at your calendar because very likely your calendar is going to have a list of all of your major assignments listed when are the due dates and so and so. So if you look in the first week or so, there's nothing going on. So of course you wanna get a head start as much as you can. The second week, I have a case study due, I have a syllabus contract due, syllabus quiz, and then introduction due. I already finished two of those stuff last night because you know, I wanted to get some stuff done last night. I wanted to be productive just to get it out of the way. So I ended up finishing a case study and then other stuff that they're due is your clinical preceptor worksheet. So this is the important form. You have to submit this every single time you start before you start a preceptorship where it lists uh, whoever you want to be following, what's their contact information, a copy of your license. And we also got other assignments here, more case studies, more quizzes due, and uh, in that, that, and that. So guys, I just want to give you a quick preview of what's expected when you're in a graduate program. Obviously, when you're in a nursing program, they're obsessed with APA format. So regardless, even though this was a regular discussion post, I still managed to go a little extra. I made a case study, module one, title page, cover page, tomato, tomato. And this is the bulk of the work. The question, the prompt was asking about a patient who came in with very high potassium. And the question was asking, how does potassium, elevated potassium especially, affect uh, one's membrane potential, how does it affect the cardiac muscle cells? The second part of the question was asking about calcium, asking about um, how does calcium affect contraction of the heart. So I had to spend a good deal amount of time working on this case study. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know what membrane potential was until I actually opened up the textbook. Now very likely the very first assignment is gonna be popping up in all of your courses. It's gonna be a course introduction. So this is the your time to introduce yourself to the class, get to know each other, and this particular prompt is asking me to share my background, my specialty, places of interest, and uh, my hobbies. So I'm gonna be working on that for the next few minutes.
this is the finished product. This is the a quick introduction I gave myself to the rest of the class. And basically what I said was, uh, my name is Christian Cervantes. I've been an RN for about two years. Graduate from my BSN from Nevada State College, class of May 2018. Go Scorpions! Currently I'm a transitioning from IMC to ICU and attending a critical care internship course. Ever since I was little, I knew in my heart that I wanted to pursue a career in healthcare and at first had aspirations to become a doctor. It wasn't until my senior year in high school when I was first introduced to the idea of becoming an RN and after weighing the pros and cons, I ultimately decided to pursue a career in nursing. Fast forward to now, I'm convinced that was the greatest decision I've ever made in my life. During my spare time, when I'm not studying, I like to travel, eat, hike, work out at the gym, and film YouTube videos. Since October 2019, I've invested time in growing a channel aimed at educating nursing students and new graduate nurses. Throughout my time in the FNP program, I plan on documenting my experience going through nursing school all over again, so on, and so look out for that. I'm also excited to work with all of you and hopefully get to meet everyone in person when COVID-19 settles down. Good luck to everyone as we embark on our new FNP journey. So my instructor responded to my prompt and also I gave a little shout out to my, my nursing uh, YouTube channel so I can get some more subscribers that way. So I like to finish my assignments from top to bottom. So I'm first gonna start off with Nursing 703, which is Advanced Health Assessment. For the very first week of uh, this semester, I have to read four chapters. So the first chapter, Evidence-Based Practice, and then followed by a weekly quiz in Canvas. So for each of these chapters, I'm expected to complete one quiz just to review my knowledge of the material read. So I'm gonna start off this by completing chapter one and of course I got my iPad right next to me and a note taking app that I highly recommend and they didn't pay me to say this or sponsor me to do this but I highly recommend Good Notes. Good Notes is a great way to take notes and also I'll show you guys real quick I'm able to come up with different folders so I have different folders and notebooks so I can organize my notes so for this week I'm going to start off with Nursing 703 Advanced Health Assessment. I open that page up and then I'm ready to go. For advanced health assessment, my instructor had already unlocked every single quiz so I could finish all these quizzes as fast as I wanted to. But I'm going to start off with obviously quiz one right there because I just finished reading uh, chapter one and I made a good amount of notes. So I'm going to test my knowledge and uh, hopefully I get a good score. And look at this guys, I got 100%. So quick fun fact, I actually was a course assistant for health assessment uh, back when I was going for my, B B my BSN. So health assessment is pretty much my bread and butter. A lot of the questions were quick refreshers from when I was taking my BSN courses, such as, you know, what constitutes objective assessments? What constitutes subjective assessments? What are examples of emergent data to write down? These are things that I've gotten to witness firsthand on the field. So. This quiz is much so a refresher, so I do expect it to get a little bit harder as the topics progress, but this very first quiz was definitely an easy quiz, so that's one quiz down, three more to go for the week. It's been a long day. Just for that one subject, advanced health assessment alone, I ended up reading two chapters and finished two quizzes. And the good thing about those quizzes was I was able to keep repeating them until you get 100%. So obviously, take advantage of that when you have that option to take an, an, a quiz unlimited times because you want to get the best score possible because it's going to make your grades look better. After that, I was able to do other stuff. Um, I got some syllabus work done. I got more introductions done. So. For the most part, it was a pretty productive day. I'm gonna listen to a lecture as I go to bed, so I'm just gonna listen to that. Hopefully all the knowledge can be absorbed as, I, as I'm as i dozing off and uh, I can use that information to take the quiz the next following day. So thank you guys so much for watching my very first day of NP school. It's gonna be an exciting journey, guys, and thank you so much for your support. And I look forward to sharing you guys my adventures and my experiences from today, day one, all the way to graduation when I become See money FNP. I'm gonna speak into existence. I'm gonna be an FNP and I'm gonna be the best FNP I can possibly be. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Bustin through the bears that try to contain me. Moving on up, making moves of money endlessly. How you think I got this name? See money, it's my specialty.